When the A1 Mini launched a couple of months ago, it caught many by surprise, myself included. Going from exclusively Core XY printers to a small cantilevered bed slinger seemed odd. But at $459 for the printer and AMS light combo, it's become a great entry point into Bamboo Lab's ecosystem. Many speculated that because this was the A1 Mini, there must be plans for a non-mini version. Well, this did turn out to be the case, and a few weeks ago, Bamboo Lab sent over their new A1 printer for review. This machine has a lot in common with the Mini, but in a larger package that's in line with Bamboo's other printers. In today's video, we will dive into the A1. We'll go over the printer's specs, what the setup was like, how it has performed, and I'll give you my overall thoughts based on my time with it so far. So, with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Massive thanks to MicroSwiss for sponsoring today's video. MicroSwiss manufactures hot ends, extruders, and nozzles for over 30 different 3D printers and are constantly expanding. Their most recent NG Revo combines E3D's rapid change Revo technology with their popular NG extruder. I've been running their upgrades for over three years and have printed everything from PLA to carbon fiber nylon with them. I love that they are US based and all of their products are machined in house. This helps them to maintain the extremely high level of quality their customers have grown to expect. Another huge perk is that their upgrades are made for specific machines, making them drop in replacements in most instances. This expedites the upgrade process and allows you to get up and running again quickly. Links are in the description to find out more about the various upgrades they offer or to pick up your own. Starting off with the specs. Just like the A1 Mini, the A1 is a bed slinger style 3D printer. Instead of a cantilevered arm for the x-axis, it has two Z towers to support both ends, giving it a very familiar I3 form factor. Its build volume is 256 millimeters in X, Y, and Z, meaning it is the exact same size as Bamboo Lab's current Core X, Y printers. The printer is made up of a combination of aluminum with a few steel brackets for the structural parts and a fair bit of plastic for holding the electronics and covering end pieces. For motion, X is still using a linear rail, but for the Z axis, they swapped from the one linear rail to two linear rods and lead screws. The Y-axis is still using linear guides, but due to the increase in bed size, they are spaced further apart for added rigidity. As far as I can tell, the tool head is identical to the one that comes on the A1 Mini. It's direct drive with a built-in filament cutter and uses the same one-hand swappable hot ends that are all metal and can reach 300 Celsius. This means that if you already have the Mini, you can share hot ends between them. There's also the small hot end fan on the left side and a 5015 underneath. The molding of the layer cooling fan shroud has been reworked to remove the section for an eddy current sensor. Adam from Vector3D discovered in his teardown of the A1 Mini that this section was actually empty. After reaching out to Bamboo Labs directly, I was told they ended up going a different direction and are using a load cell in the tool head for Z-axis homing, bed leveling, and the flow dynamics calibration. There's also a filament runout sensor built into the tool head. On the right side of the x-axis is the light and camera, and on the left side there is the same filament poop flinger mechanism that's used when starting a print or during filament swaps. The bed system is magnetic and comes with a dual-sided powder-coated PEI spring steel sheet. This is the exact same form factor as Bamboo Labs Core XY printers, so bed plates can be shared between them. Instead of a magnetic sheet, the A1 has large embedded magnets. Like on the Mini, the max temperature of the bed is 80 Celsius, so it is going to be a PLA, PETG, and TPU machine primarily. On the back left of the bed is a nozzle scrubber and a registration tab to help with aligning the build plate. While the A1 Mini bed is very thin and in the open, the housing around the bed on this printer is much thicker, like what comes on their Core XYs. Although there are two lead screws and linear rods for the Z-axis, it's actually driven by a singular motor that can be found underneath the printer. From what I can see, there's a belt that loops around the motor and the lead screws for each side to keep them synchronized. While the x-axis uses a standard size 6mm belt, the y-axis uses a beefier 9mm one. Interfacing with the printer can be done through the slicer, mobile app, or using the 3.5 inch touchscreen. This appears to be the same screen as on the Mini, running the exact same interface. Other than my usual complaint of it being a little slow to respond, it's bright and has a wide viewing angle. If you don't find yourself using it, you can swivel it out of the way, which does save a bit of space. This gives you the options to print over Bamboo's cloud, over your Wi-Fi network, or just using the micro SD card slot on the front. 
On the back of the printer is the power switch and input, along with two accessory ports, which you will use one of if you get the AMS light. Just like with the Mini, the A1 is compatible with the AMS light material station. The printer came packaged nicely and setup was relatively simple, but it did take a little bit longer than Bamboo's other printers. This is mostly due to the top and bottom portion coming separated in the box. These are attached together with 16 screws, which is what takes most of that assembly time. Four of them are installed from the bottom and the rest are hidden underneath a cover on the Y-axis. If you pull up on the cover, it slides out from under the bed, revealing the holes you need to install the screws into. These had green rings around them so you can easily see where to insert them, and luckily this only needs to be done once for the initial assembly. Other than that, there are four cables to connect under the printer before attaching the purge wiper and spool holder. Powering on the printer the first time will guide you through the initial setup process, which is identical to the A1 Mini. You can choose to connect it to Wi-Fi and pair it with the Bamboo Handy app. It then runs a series of calibrations like motor noise cancellation, input shaping, and a bed mesh. While I've had this printer, there has been a couple of firmware updates, and from what I remember, the first time I ran through the calibration, it only did maybe a 5x5 grid, and when I reset the printer to run through the process again after a couple of firmware updates, the grid that it performed at the beginning was like a 20x20 20 20 that took in total 10 minutes. The good news is, is that that massive grid is only a one-time deal during setup and the leveling it's going to be doing before a print is much smaller and much faster. I started off with printing out a couple of benches. These were pre-sliced with a 19 minute print time and came on the printer. At this point, I'm used to Core XY printers moving at high speeds, but it's still a wild concept to me seeing bed slingers moving at these quick speeds. The quality of the benches certainly wasn't bad considering this is a bed slinger with only a single 5015 for cooling, but there were some imperfections. I found there to be some ringing at the front of the hole, and you can see there was not enough time for adequate cooling at the top of the back window and top corners. Next up, I printed out the pre-sliced filament scraper that turned out great. In my review of the A1 Mini, one of my concerns was with the total footprint required for the printer, a filament purge catcher, and the AMS light. I figured someone would come up with a mounting solution, which we have definitely seen, and Bamboo Lab sent over a file for the AMS light to mount on top of the A1 printer. This initially came as one plate of parts, but it had some issues with one of the smaller parts not sticking to its supports, so I split it into two trays. It's a pretty clever design that only needs two long M3 screws and these self-tapping screws that come with the AMS light to mount it on the top crossbar of the printer. I've been using this setup without issue, but due to the silicone feet on the bottom of this printer, it definitely introduces some front and back wobble. I was told this design is still being refined and that they are looking at a bracket for the bottom of the Z that will help to reinforce it. I really like this tower setup over having it sitting beside the printer and I think that this or some variation of this is going to be a really popular upgrade. I printed a few other single colored prints like a drill guide dust collector, a couple of flying propeller pull copters, and a low poly howling wolf. These were all printed with slicer defaults and I was pretty happy with the results. Next, I printed a castle slide coin storage model that was a bit taller and had a slide that suspended around the model, which looked like a good overhang test. I printed this model twice, the first time at a 0.12 layer height and the second at a 0.16 millimeter layer height. Looking from the underside, you can see the innermost edge of the slide needed some additional cooling as it's slightly curled in. I believe this curl is what caused a slight shift on the layer around where the bridge meets the castle. If I were printing this model again, I would slightly lower temps and increase the minimal layer time to give better cooling. The auxiliary fan found in the Core XY printers really helps with models like this that need a lot of cooling. The multicolor experience on this printer is identical to the A1 Mini. I've played around with quite a few multicolor setups over the years, and both the AMS and AMS Lite have been by far the easiest to use and most consistent. I printed out an articulated dragon in four colors along with a handful of poker chips that turned out great. Since this is a single nozzle setup, depending on what you're printing, you will have quite a bit of waste material from the purging. The best ways to offset this is by printing multiples when possible, fine tuning the needed transition length between colors, and sticking with models that don't have a ridiculous amount of filament swaps. Along with the printer, Bamboo Lamp sent over one of their Hue Forge filament packs and a file that they had prepared. Hueforge prints can be done with just manual swaps, but the AMS auto swapping is super convenient and has very little waste since it only has to purge a few times for the entire print. 
I was blown away by the end result of this print and I really want to spend more time creating my own models with it. Let me know in the comments down below if there's interest in me doing a dive into Hueforge for an upcoming video. One issue I discovered early on was with the steel plate on this printer. As mentioned, it's using the same plate found on the Core XY machines and there is a registration tab in the back center. However, I don't find it particularly easy to just push in and have aligned. I didn't put much thought into it initially, but after finding some fairly deep scratches on the back of my PEI plate after a print, I investigated further. What I discovered is that there is a small tab on the far back left and right of the bed's frame. These tabs are too short to stop the bed from riding over them, but they are tall enough to not fit perfectly underneath the spring steel. This means that if you put the bed back in place and it happens to go over one of those tabs, it will be at a slight angle. This leads to your nozzle being too close to the bed, at least towards the very back, and the scratches I discovered. Since I know now, I check this every single time I put the bed back to make sure I see both of the tabs and they're not under the bed, but it is a little annoying and definitely my main complaint with this printer. Performance-wise, I've been quite happy with this printer and I feel like it completes Bamboo Labs lineup of printers from entry level with the A1 Mini up through the X1 Carbon. The price of the A1 is $399 or $559 with the AMS Lite combo, which is pretty incredible for a multicolor setup with the specs that this printer has. The main limitations are that the bed caps at 80 Celsius and that for cooling you only have a single 5015 fan. However, there are many people who only print with PLA, PETG, and TPU even for print farms. To work around the need for a little more cooling, you can either increase the minimal layer time or print multiple parts at once. Currently, I think the best all-around price to performance is the Bamboo Lab P1S, but I can definitely see the demand for a printer like the A1. Sharing the same build plate and having the same build volume will be really convenient for anyone wanting to run a variety of bamboo printers in their lineup. Now we just need to wait for their large format printer that's hopefully coming next year. And that has been at the Bamboo Lab A1. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I was able to answer the majority of the questions that you had. If you do have any additional questions, be sure to let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. As always, if I don't know the answer to those questions, I have no problem reaching out directly to the manufacturer to try to get those answers for you. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Awards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from Modbot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.